Hey teachers, in this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize your online listening lessons by inserting your audio file right into your PowerPoint or Google slide. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome. I'm Shannon from Temple Horizons. And if you're interested in strategies like the one you're about to learn in this video that will help you teach more successful online English lessons and really get the most out of your resources and materials, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel for new videos every week. And also, if you're looking for more hands-on training, then check out the video description below. I've left you a link there to check out the TEFL Horizons membership. And in that membership, we do live teacher training workshops via Zoom every month. So you can show up live, work with me, and you also get a bunch of other great benefits as a member. Okay, so when it comes to teaching a listening lesson, obviously you have the audio file, whatever you want the students to listen to in the lesson, and then you should also have tasks that the students are going to do while they listen to the audio. So for example, you might have a set of comprehension questions that you want the students to answer based on whatever they hear in the audio file. And a really good rule of thumb for listening exercises is that students should be able to see the task. So actually look at the questions that they're meant to be answering while they're listening to the audio. So that way students know exactly what information they're supposed to be listening for and they have some visual help in the form of those questions, right? They have keywords, for example, that they can be looking at while they're listening to try to make those connections while the audio is playing. So a really efficient way to do this, to make this possible for your students, is to format your PowerPoint or your Google slide with the task and the audio right there on the same slide. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so here I am with a PowerPoint slide that I've created where I basically just took the first listening task from this particular lesson from American English File 3, which is the intermediate level, and I just retyped the true or false statements onto my slide and then used a stock photo from Canva as the background image. So now what I want to do is insert the audio file from American English File that goes along with this task directly into my slide. And you can do that in a couple of ways. So the first option is to go up here to insert along the top menu, and then you'll go all the way to the right side over here and choose audio. So when you click this little down arrow, it gives you the option to choose audio from file. You can click that and from there, it will pull up all of the files on your computer and just select wherever you have the audio file saved. The other option, particularly if you're working on a Mac like I am, is to just open the folder where you have the audio file saved on your computer uh, or save it first on your desktop. And then wherever you have it saved, head over there, find the audio track that you need, and then just drag it directly onto your PowerPoint slide. From there, as you can see, it's now up here in the top corner, but you can click and drag this wherever you'd like on the slide. I've saved some space for it down here. And then you can even resize this by clicking and dragging on one of the corners. So maybe I want it to look like that. I'm going to position it where I want. And now it's ready to go. Notice that when you click outside of the audio file, so right now I have it selected, but when I click somewhere else, that bar where you can see the audio file playing disappears. And I now just have that audio icon. So now when I'm actually teaching my lesson, the students can see the true or false statements on the slide if I'm sharing my screen. And make sure if you're teaching on Zoom, when you first select share screen and you get that pop up that asks you which screen you want to share. So obviously you'll choose your PowerPoint presentation that you have open. But before you officially click share, there's a little box down at the corner that gives you the option to share computer sound. So make sure you tick that box so that your audio sound actually goes through the Zoom platform and it's much easier for students to hear. So then during your lesson, you have the true or false statements on your slide. The students can see them when you're sharing your screen. And when it's time for you to actually play the audio, you'll just click on your audio icon and click play. 3.23. And then students will be able to hear the sound. Uh, one quick tip while the audio is playing, make sure that you leave this selected. If you click anywhere else on the slide, the audio will stop. So listen. 
So you can see if I try to click on one of the questions to highlight something or do something else while the students are listening, it immediately stops the audio. So you just need to make sure you don't click anywhere else on your slide while the audio is playing. Another cool thing about having audio inserted into the slide is that that audio file will carry over if I duplicate the slide. So let's say I'm now ready to put the second listening task around this same audio file into my lesson in the planning process. So instead of having to go into my computer and find the audio file again, I could just duplicate this slide. And on my Mac, I do that by making sure this slide is highlighted over here in the slide preview area. And then I'm gonna hold down Shift, Command, and D all at the same time. And now it's duplicated my slide. So I have two identical copies of the same slide. Now I could just delete all of these text boxes with this task. I can keep the same background, keep the same audio file, come up here and change my instructions, and then put the new question onto this slide. And the audio still plays just like it did before. Social networking site Facebook. And then one more thing I can show you with this. What if I don't want to duplicate my slide, but I want to start with a new blank slide? I can go up here to home, insert a new slide, and then I can actually just come back here, click on my audio, copy it, come to my blank slide, and paste it. And now I have the audio file on my new slide if I want students to listen to the same audio text again without having to insert the audio and find it on my computer and all of that all over again. Now let's say you wanna repeat this same process, but your listening lesson is based around a video, not just an audio file. So you can follow almost the exact same process to insert videos directly into your PowerPoint slide as well. So just like before, you'll go up to insert on the top menu, and then instead of choosing audio, you're gonna choose video. So if you click that little down arrow, you'll see that you can either insert a movie directly from a file if you have a video file already saved on your computer. So again, you can click on that, select the video file wherever you have it saved, or if you have the video file ready to go on your desktop, just like with the audio file, you can drag it directly onto your PowerPoint slide. You can also choose online movie, and that will give you the option to enter the URL. So for example, if you wanna build your lesson around a video that you found on YouTube, you'll just go and copy the YouTube video link, for example, this five minute TED talk I found, and then you'll paste that link here and click insert. And so now that video pops right up on my slide. I can resize it by grabbing and dragging the corners and position it anywhere I want on my slide. And when I click play, the video automatically starts. So this is really helpful because by doing this, you also have the video here on one side of your slide. If you drag it over a little bit, uh, you can resize it, and this would save you some space to actually insert a text box here and type in your comprehension questions. So the students would be able to have the questions available to them on the same slide as they're watching the video. If you're using Google Slides instead of PowerPoint, it works almost the same way. So once you have your blank slide presentation pulled up, just like before, you'll go to Insert along the top menu, find audio. The only difference is with Google Slides, you first need to have saved the audio onto your Google Drive. So just make sure you save that audio file, whatever audio file you want to use, into your Google Drive first, and then it's going to give you the option to choose the audio file right from your Google Drive folders. Once you've selected one, you can double click, and then just like before, it pops up as a little audio icon into your slide that you can then resize or move anywhere you'd like. For a video file, it's very similar. You'll also go to insert along the top menu. This time choose video. And now you have the option to either choose a video file again from your Google Drive. So make sure you save the video in your Google Drive first. Or just like on PowerPoint, you can choose a link directly from YouTube and paste the link here. And then just like with PowerPoint, it will pop that video 
right into your Google Slide. The one thing that I really like about Google Slides that I have not been able to do on PowerPoint is you can actually set the start time and end time for a YouTube video. So maybe you don't want it to start right at the beginning, like you wanna skip the, this little TED Talk introduction. You can actually find exactly where you want the video to start and then put that time here for the start time. And if you wanna stop the video before the YouTube video officially ends, you can change the end time as well. So this is a super helpful trick if you wanna show maybe just a 30 second clip of a video and you don't wanna to have to try to find the exact start and end time every time you play it for your students, just put in the exact start and end time that you want into your Google slide format options for the video playback. And then you're all set. You can resize the video, position it wherever you want on the slide, and then add your questions or tasks right there on the same slide. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know. And of course, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments as well. See you next time. Thank you.